In this video, you learn the art of chord picking on guitar. Chord picking is when you pluck the notes out of a chord separately rather than strum them all at the same time. Think of the introduction to songs like Hotel California or Sweet Home Alabama. That's chord picking. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson, I take you through the steps necessary to gain the skill of chord picking on guitar. Strumming the chords you play is one thing and of course has its place. However, adding the technique of plucking the notes out of the chords separately will drastically increase the range and dynamics of your guitar playing. It's a much more sophisticated and perhaps elegant way to approach your guitar playing. You will learn how to train chord picking into your guitar playing. You'll learn several common picking patterns and ways to apply these patterns to the chord progressions you play. So let's get into it. Okay, so chord picking on guitar. Here's a couple of things Pretty simple, but just to keep in mind when you do pluck the notes of the chord separately. So let me demonstrate on a G chord here. It's a good old standard open G chord. First thing is, it's not a rule, but most times, most times, you'll start, you'll pluck the chord from the root note of the chord itself, okay? So for a G, that's gonna be the sixth string, the G note. That's typically where you'll start most patterns. It just sets up the sound of the progression and the bass component nicely. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but most times that's what happens. So you wanna know where the root note is so you know where to start the particular pattern you're gonna pick, depending on the chord that you're holding. So that's the, the first thing. The other thing, for the most part again, I think this will be most times you do this, is when you pluck the string, pick in the direction of the next string you're gonna play. So if I just played on the G chord here and I pluck down, or if I have a pattern, let's let's go like this, a real simple pattern. If I have a pattern that goes six, four, three, two, one, two, three, okay, six, four, three, two, one, two, three, which is, I'm referring to string numbers there. So six, four, three, two, one, two, three. I'm gonna pick that down, 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 up, up, up. Now the reason for the picking directions there is because I want to pick in the direction of my next string. So I'm going to pick down because the next string is in that direction and I naturally follow through to where I need to be to pluck the next string. Then I pluck again, down, because I'm heading that way, down, down. When I get to the top string, the first one, I don't pick down, I pick up because I know I'm going to be heading back down the strings. If I pick that top string with a down, I could, but now I've got to make a new motion to get in position to pluck the next note in the chord or the next string. So we pick in the direction of the next string that's going to be plucked. Okay. There might be some exceptions to that without really thinking through, but most times that's the best way and most efficient way to pick through your chords with this style. So it's nice and efficient and you'll be able to build up a lot of speed and, you know, it'll be much easier and smoother. For you okay so i'll highlight that when we look at some patterns the picking directions so you can see that the other thing in terms of the strategy um, points here is whatever pattern you're picking pick without looking or from the start start to work at picking without looking so if i've got that pattern for a simple pattern i just did okay now it's okay to look at my picking hand to make sure i'm doing the pattern accurately that i'm picking in the right directions and all that sort of stuff but once I've got that going, so I get it going, right? And I might play it a couple of times. Then I won't stop playing it, but I'll look away and see if I can do it without looking at my strings. And if I make some error, rather than just stop, I'll look back down at my hand and correct it, okay? I picked the wrong direction there, so there's an error of sorts. Okay, but I'm just picking in the direction of my next string as I go here and I'm watching and then I'm looking away okay because we want to train ourselves to not have to be a slave looking at our picking hand if we do we're going to shift out we're going to take our focus away from whoever we're playing with at the time or the song we're playing along to and when you're playing guitar half of your focus is on what you're doing and the other half is on what's happening around you, whether you're playing with people live in the room or to a recording or whatever. It's a bit like when you're driving a car, you've got to focus on what you're doing, but you've got to be focused on what's happening around you too. That's the same with playing guitar. So by being able to do this stuff without looking, it's um, going to allow you to do that. The other thing is this type of playing is pretty forgiving if you make a, a mistake, right? Um, because I'm holding you know full chord shapes here, if I go to pick my 
second string and accidentally hit the first string, all I'm going to do is play another note that's in the chord. It's going to sound fine. The only mistake that people will see or hear is if you stop thinking you've made a mistake because you didn't get the string you wanted. Just keep it going at all costs. It will sound fine. I miss strings all the time, but you probably wouldn't know it because I don't stop and break the rhythm and, you know, it's, it's fine. So you'll get more accurate for sure, but don't worry if you hit another string, just keep playing, it will be fine. And then you'll relax with it more because you'll know if you make a, a mistake, um, it's not gonna be a big deal. So there are a couple of sort of pointers to start with for chord picking to focus on. They're the things that are gonna get you up and going and you know um, help you master this really cool way to play chords on guitar. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of typical chord picking patterns so you can start training this technique into your playing. Okay, so I'll just start on, or use the G chord again here. G open chord. So here's a pretty common picking pattern and I'll refer to the strings I'm plucking, okay? So I'm playing a six, four, three, four, one, two, three. So simply plucking the sixth string, then the fourth, the third, the fourth, again, then one, two, three. So, okay, like that. Now, the picking directions, I'm gonna pick down, down, up, down, up, 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 because that's, the direction of my next string. So when I pick down on the first string, it's because I'm heading that way. And I pick down again, because I want to go to a higher string once more. But when I pick the third string, I know I'm going to come back to the fourth. So I pick that up. So I've naturally follow through to where I need to be to pick down on the fourth string again. And then up picks on the first, second, and third strings to follow through each time and then end up back where I need to be to repeat. Down, down, up, down, up, up, up. Okay, always remember picking direction of the next string and when you practice that and any other pattern practice not looking as well start looking like I was saying before and then look away as you continue to play make errors look back correct look away you'll get a really good radar for where all the strings are if you like um, when you when you're plucking them now another pattern um, let's go with this one okay this one is going six four three two one and then, sorry, six, four, three, two, six, one, two, three. Six, four, three, two, six, one, two, three. So this one has quite a big jump. We're going to go down, down, down on six, four, three, then up on two, because we're not going to, because we know we're going to head back to the sixth string. And that's where the, well, one of the skips is. And then sixth string down, and then you're in position, you follow through to be able to get to the first string and pick up on one, two, and three. Okay, down, uh, down, 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 up, down, up, up, up. Okay, that is the picking pattern for that, or the picking directions rather for that particular pattern. Let's look at one more here. There's lots of variations, but as always, it's about learning some variations, mixing them up and not really trying to memorize anything here. Just build the ability to play, you know, accurately a number of picking patterns that then you'll come across in songs and apply yourself. So this one on G will go... Uh, let's see. We'll go six, two, four, three, six, two, three. Six, two, four, three, six, two, three. A little bit of crisscrossing, skipping strings, etc., which is good practice with this technique. So I'm going to go down, up, down, up, down, up, up. Again, picking in the direction of my next string. Down, so I follow through to the second string. Up, so I follow through to four. Down, so I follow through to the third string. Up. And then follow through to the bottom, down, follow through to the second, up, and up on the third as well, because now I'm going to be back at the sixth fret to repeat. Okay, that's our pattern. Um, <laughs> that one, I think. Yeah. Okay. So down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. Okay, so that is three picking patterns that gets you started with 
chord picking and will serve you well in being able to apply this technique to your playing. Okay, so let's take uh, our chord picking and let's apply it to a chord progression because so far we've looked at the strategies needed for chord picking on guitar. We've applied some common, you know, typical chord picking patterns to a G chord, but now let's apply it to a chord progression. So let's say we take a typical progression like a G chord to a C add nine to a D. Okay, let's do that. G chord to a C to a D. Okay, C add nine to a D. So let's say we take that first chord picking pattern. We'll use that as our example here. Okay, so I already was applying it to a G chord, so it's pretty straightforward. It would be six, four, three, two, one. Sorry, what am I saying there? Six, four, three, four, one, two, three. Remember the numbers I'm saying here are the strings I'm plucking. Six, four, three, four, one, two, three. Now, when I take that same pattern and apply it to my C add nine chord, I don't want to start it from the sixth string because that's not where the root note is anymore. Remember, most times it's best to start from the root note of the chord. So here's my C chord. I'm going to pluck from the fifth string. Every other string will be the same as you know, it was when I played it on G, only I'm starting from the fifth string. So five, four, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, five, four, three, four, one, two, three. On the G, it was six, four, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, on C, it's five, four, three, four, one, two, three. Now, when you get to a D chord, it's root note is on the fourth string. So now you've got to move that first note of the pattern up a string again. And in fact, you kind of got to move the whole pattern up a string set because you're now kind of taking the pattern and compressing it into a four string span here, if you like. So if you pluck the fourth string, you're now going to play the third, second, third, one, two, three. So it's the same, the pattern follows the same contour, right? If, if that makes sense. You're going up three, back one, then skipping up to the top string and coming down three. So when we're on the G chord, accessing all six strings, it was still the same contour, right? It was um, up three, down one, then up to the top string and down three. On the D, it's compressed into the four string span once again, but it's still going up three, down one, and then up the three strings of the, or down rather, the top three strings of the guitar. So on the G it goes six, four, three, four, one, two, three. On C, six, four, three, four, one, two, three. And D, four, three, two, three, one, two, three. Maybe two bars on the D to make out a four bar chord progression. So we've got this on G. that simple so sometimes when you've got a pattern you've got to apply it to the chord you're gonna well you gotta you gotta mold it if you like or shape it to the chord that you're applying it to so sometimes it's still the same contour but it's you know across less of a string range depending on the chord you're playing like the D chord which starts from the fourth string um, you know if I took the the another pattern here and applied it so what did we have we had the six four three two six one two three Six, four, three, two, six, one, two, three. So when I do that on the C chord, same thing from the fifth string note. Five, four, three, two, uh, five, one, two, three. Five, four, three, two, five, one, two, three. On the D, okay, let's see how we'd work it on the D. Yeah, so we go one, two, oh, sorry, four, three, two, one, four, one, two, three. We're still going up four, back down to the root, and then the top three strings. That was the same as we did on G. It's just over a bigger span. So still we've got the same contour, just compressed into the four strings for a D chord. Now, if it's not possible to get a pattern from one chord to another, you know, following the same contour, change it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not always going to be the case that when you see chord picking in a song, that it's going to be exactly the same on each chord. The patterns can change from one chord to another. That, that's fine. There's typically going to be a pattern, but it might vary from one chord to another for a number of reasons. But your goal here is to build the strategies needed for chord picking, apply them to different chords, apply them to chord progressions, mix them up, and don't focus on memorizing a whole bunch of stuff. Focus on mastering the skill of ad-libbing this stuff. So when chord picking comes up in a song, you can just apply some chord picking and get the effect that you're after. Okay, so follow those steps.
for chord picking on guitar. It's a really cool sound and will add to your you know, the dynamics and, and sound of your, your guitar playing. If you like this video on chord picking, then you'll love this Acoustic Rhythm Guitar Techniques mini course. In this course, I show you the five ways to sound much better as a rhythm guitarist, including strumming techniques, more chord picking ideas, rhythm riffs and fills, as well as cool sounding chords and embellishments. Over the course of five days, you will not only be trained in depth on each of these areas of your guitar playing, but also how to put it all together to create great sounding music. So click the link in the description below this video to gain access to the Acoustic Rhythm Guitar Techniques mini course. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and I would love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and don't forget to hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.